The U.S. has secured the release of Brittany Griner from Russia. But Metro Detroit's Paul Whelan is still imprisoned and he's speaking out. The FBI director issues a warning to TikTok users about national security and the security of their own personal information. I'm 41 meteorologist Kim Adams. It's a dry afternoon here in Metro Detroit with temperatures in the 30s and low 40s. But we are tracking some snow headed to Metro Detroit. I'll tell you how much coming up in the forecast. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon and thanks for joining me. The big news of the day, the ordeal is finally over for one of the Americans imprisoned in Russia. WNBA star and Olympic gold medalist Brittany Griner is free today after the Biden administration negotiated her release from Russia. Jason Colthorpe is live in the newsroom with more on the prisoner exchange and the reaction to it. Jason. Yeah, a lot to cover here, Christy. Brittany Griner has been jailed in Russia since February when police at an airport in Moscow said they found vape canisters containing cannabis oil in her luggage. In August, she was sentenced to nine years in prison. Today, she's on a plane on her way home. We have new video of the actual prisoner exchange taking place in the United Arab Emirates. President Biden says he signed off on a deal that had been in the works for the past two weeks. That deal includes the release of a former Soviet Army lieutenant nicknamed the Merchant of Death, who has been serving a 25 year sentence on charges of trying to sell weapons to be used against Americans. The president and vice president announced the deal this morning at the White House. Griner's wife, Cheryl, spoke about her sense of relief. So over the last nine months, you all have been um, so privy to one of the darkest moments of my life. And so today I'm just standing here um, overwhelmed with emotions. But the most important emotion that I have right now is just sincere gratitude um, for President Biden and his entire administration. We do understand that there are still people out here who are enduring what I endured the last nine months of missing tremendously their loved ones. So thank you everybody for your support. Um, and today it's just a happy day for me and my family. So um, I'm going to smile right now. <laughs> um, thank you. Well, you just heard Cheryl Griner mention others still waiting and missing their loved ones. Well, that was in reference to Metro Detroit native Paul Whelan, who was arrested in Russia in late 2018 and has been held there ever since, accused of spying. Whelan had previously been mentioned as part of a package deal in a prisoner swap involving Griner. Whelan was actually able to speak by phone with CNN today. I have to say I am greatly disappointed that more has not been done to secure my release, yeah. especially as the four-year anniversary of my arrest is coming up. I was arrested for a crime that never occurred. I'm happy that Brittany is going home today and that Trevor went home when he did, but I don't understand why I'm still sitting here. My bags are packed. I'm ready to go home. I just need an airplane to come and get me. We never forgot about Brittany. We've not forgotten about Paul Whelan, who's been unjustly detained in Russia for years. This was not a choice of which American to bring home. We brought home Trevor Reed when we had a chance early this year. Sadly, for totally illegitimate reasons, Russia is treating Paul's case differently than Brittany's. And while we have not yet succeeded in securing Paul's release, we are not giving up. We will never give up. We remain in close touch with Paul's family, the Whelan family, and my thoughts and prayers are with them today. And there may be something to that. Paul Whelan's Russian lawyer was in touch with NBC News today, saying negotiations are underway and he expects a prisoner exchange to set Whelan free within the next month or two. Can only hope. But again, that's just the opinion of Paul Whelan's lawyer. Much more to come on this story, you can bet. Christy, back to you. All right, thanks so much, Jason. We'll see you in a bit. And we are hearing from the Whelan family this afternoon. Paul's brother, David Whelan, says he is glad that Brittany Griner is coming home. He also confirms the White House has been in touch, letting the family know in advance that Paul would not be part of this exchange. In a statement, David Whelan says in part, that early warning meant that our family has been able to mentally prepare for what is now a public disappointment for us and a catastrophe for Paul. 
He also says the Biden administration made the right decision to bring Ms. Griner home and to make the deal that was possible rather than waiting for one that was not going to happen. We will hear more from David Whelan in a live report at 5 o'clock today. A high school student is hospitalized after a hit and run accident in Westland. It happened around quarter to seven this morning as the 15 year old was crossing Newburgh Road at Marquette on her way to John Glenn High School. Police say someone in an SUV ran a red light, hit the girl and kept going. The teen was taken to St. Mary's Hospital in Livonia with serious injuries. Westland police say they have located the suspected driver and taken them into custody. There are new criminal sexual conduct charges against a local doctor who gave physicals to youth hockey players. Doctors V. Levron was already facing 17 charges related to sexual abuse of patients during medical exams at his Farmington Hills home. Now the Oakland County prosecutor has added a second degree charge for the assault of a 14 year old boy in January of 2018 and a fourth degree charge for assaulting a 30 year old man in December of 2020. Levron is currently held in the Oakland County Jail on multiple bonds exceeding $2 million. A tip line has been set up for possible victims who've yet to come forward. That number there is the bottom of your screen at 248-871-2610. U of M football star Mozzie Smith pleading guilty today to a misdemeanor gun charge. Smith was charged December 1st with carrying a concealed weapon without the proper license during a traffic stop back in October. That is a felony, but as part of his plea bargain, Smith pled down to a single charge of attempted possession of a loaded weapon while in a motor vehicle. He is set to be sentenced on the 29th. That's just two days before the Wolverines take on TCU in the Fiesta Bowl. The university says there's no change to Smith's status with the team. All right, it is that time now for our first look at our forecast, and here's Kim Adams. Hi, Kim. Hi, Christy. Well, it's going to be an easy evening commute as it is dry out there right now, but it's chilly in some spots. 36 in Pontiac, 39 in Ann Arbor, 38 in Mount Clemens, hanging on to 41, though, at City Airport and also at Metro 40 in Monroe. It's a little cooler than it was yesterday by 9 degrees in Howell, 9 degrees cooler in Pontiac as well, and 7 degrees cooler than it was this same time yesterday in the city of Detroit. Now, we've got a lot of clouds in place overnight tonight. We'll stay mostly cloudy, but the rain and snow will all stay to our south until at least tomorrow afternoon. So if you have evening plans tonight, maybe you're doing a little Christmas shopping, totally fine. Temperatures will stay in the 30s all the way through midnight. We'll talk more about snow and what we're expecting for the daytime tomorrow coming up in the forecast. Sounds good, Kim. We'll see you in just a bit. A bill protecting same-sex marriages is one step closer to becoming the law of the land. The U.S. House voted 258 to 169 today in favor of the Respect for Marriage Act, which requires all states to recognize same-sex marriages that have taken place since the 2015 Supreme Court ruling that legalized those unions nationwide. The bill passed by the Senate last week requires states to recognize legal marriages regardless of, quote, sex, race, ethnicity, or national origin. President Biden has said he will sign the bill into law. On the coronavirus front, the FDA has now authorized the Omicron variant vaccines for children as young as six months old. The shots target the BA5 subvariant as well as the original COVID strain. The Centers for Disease Control still has to sign off on the shots before they can be administered by pharmacies and physicians. And the approval comes as COVID infections and hospitalizations are on the rise nationally. Well, TikTok is one of the most popular social media platforms with somewhere between one and two billion active monthly users. And if you're not on it, chances are your kids are. But today, the message from the director of the FBI is that users should think twice about that app. Paula Tutman looks into the concerns. Sounding the alarm on TikTok, yup, one more time. The FBI's director is joining a growing chorus, cautioning that this platform is a national security threat. The Chinese government uh, has shown a willingness to steal Americans' data on a scale that dwarfs any other. While speaking at the University of Michigan, FBI Director Christopher Wray said that the video sharing app TikTok, which is owned by Chinese company ByteDance, is collecting data from U.S. users for spying purposes and could gain access to your device through software. He also warns that the Chinese government could manipulate content on the app with its recommendation algorithm. All of these things are in the hands of 
uh, of a government that doesn't share our values. Last month, the FCC commissioner also called for a nationwide TikTok ban and earlier this year urged Apple and Google to remove the app from their app stores. And last week, South Dakota's governor banned state employees from using the app on government devices. Experts recommend that you think twice before downloading it on your phone. You have a Chinese-owned app that has incredible AI. It's very, very addictive. Political risk consultant Ian Brennan says the U.S. will likely take a more cautious approach and says he doesn't expect the U.S. government to suddenly ban TikTok nationally. The U.S. wants to go after issues that are of direct national security concern to the United States, like advanced semiconductors used by the military industrial complex in China. And here's some additional information about this, because Indiana's attorney general on Wednesday actually sued the Chinese-owned app TikTok for what it calls deceiving users about China's access to their data and for exposing children to mature content. And this is the first state to actually have a lawsuit against this popular app and video service. Paula Tutman, Local 4. Yeah, to be continued on that. Thanks so much, Paula.